Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to come with y'all with y'all tropical update for today because we do have a few anomalies to talk about. Now, as you can see, the storms are still brewing down Texas and it will go down southern Texas for the rest of the day today, as well as that localization that was happening towards Houston that I showed in the video yesterday. So if you need an update on that, please go watch that video. Now, as you can see here, we do have our disturbance. It did make it to the Gulf. I don't know if anybody's going to be talking about this, but I'm going to update you as far as the Gulf storm. Plus, we have another chance for a possible anomaly to pop up later on at the beginning of next month in the Gulf. So if you've never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But God bless you and your family. Thank you for joining the community. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You're not going to want to miss an update for this hurricane season. It is going to burst into a pretty big one. It's going to be somewhat quiet. Then it's going to pop. Now hit that like button if you like these tropical updates. I will continue them for you as often as I can for you. Also share this on social media. Alert others to what these possibilities are. Now this is actually what's in the Gulf. And this was our energy that was swirling around for what could happen in the Gulf. However, it's not showing any chance of formation, no center of location to the storm. Now, NOAA did pick this up on their radar and they did check it out and they saw that there was no chance for formation, so they did not put anything up about it. It will get killed by this high pressure that's moving in. It's even gaining even stronger. I'll show you everything you need to know about this storm, but as you can see, it does try to become a surface low pressure. It becomes an upper level low in the Gulf, right on the edge of Louisiana. It actually sits here and spins for a while, dropping all kind of rainfall before it dissipates. And the same high pressure that's causing all this low level winds and all these problems for Texas with all these storms is the same high pressure that is blocking this from any formation. But you can see it swirling around. It's trying to become something, although it has a lot of things going against it. Not only are the temperatures still way too cold along the sea shelf, I am showing that it will also be starting to warm up pretty soon. So all this will not be a problem as far as it dying down. It actually will start strengthening towards the end of this month. But here it is, and it will be sitting there for a little while. And you can even see a good eye in this formation right there. It tries to get a center of location for this storm. It just can't quite hold it together. There's too much shear, and the water's too cold for any rapid intensification. Another problem that's been going on is Texas has been losing a lot of power. Uh, yesterday, I updated that it was 44,000 homes without power. By the evening, it got better to 20,000 homes. But now it's got smashed again and is back to 57,000 homes without power. Now we do have the storm off the east coast in the Atlantic. And it's only got a 30% chance of formation within five days of becoming anything. And when I looked into it, it has about a 50% chance for becoming a tropical storm. I will show you the winds. I will show you the outcome to this. It actually does get pretty strong as it goes south and west. But then it starts going north and east and leaves. So it's really nothing to worry about. However, it could be the first subtropical. And then we have the one in the Pacific, right past Guatemala and Costa Rica. And it does have a 30% chance within the next five days to form something. But I've been watching this energy for a while. It actually was bobbling around for a while in the Caribbean. Then it finally shifted and went through Guatemala and is going to come out on the western side in the Pacific. So it will go off and be a fish storm. Now the GFS and the Euro confirms that this system will not be any harm to us. It will be leaving. Uh, on the 20th for tomorrow, it will get a surface low pressure. It will swing around for a while in the Atlantic and it will strengthen a little bit before it moves north and east and starts leaving. And this will be by the 23rd and 24th. It will be gone. So there's really nothing to worry about as far as the, the east coast storm that's in the Atlantic. It could have subtropical characteristics. It could become a tropical storm for a little while before dying out and leaving. But you can see here also with the Euro, it will become a surface low pressure. It will strengthen uh, as it builds through the days, but it will be leaving through the north and the northeast through the days to come. So there's really nothing to worry about as far as any, any impacts on the U.S. And as far as the system that went into the Gulf, this is the reason why there was no worry about it. It's just way too cold along the sea shelf over here on the Gulf Coast. You can see that it stays way too cold for days to come. This is by today, by tomorrow. It's still way too cold for any formation. That's in the 70s and the high 60s and the low 70s. So that's very too low. It needs to be at least 80. But you can also see that when we get around the 25th of May towards the end of the month, the coldness starts going away and now it starts warming up 
in the Gulf really good. And it's starting to get ready for some tropical cyclones. Now it's starting to warm up by the end of the month, by the 26th, especially the 27th of May, and the coldness will be gone. So now the Gulf is starting to warm up. Matter of fact, in five days, when we get to the 24th of May, right before the 25th, when you look at the ensemble for the tropical cyclones, where they could possibly form up, you can see that right here in the Gulf, we do get a 1,000 millibar pressure, low pressure system that could form up in the Gulf, and it could make its way towards the Gulf states. Now, if you notice, it does weaken before it gets there, but there is a period of rapid intensification where it gets back to 1,000 millibars. Now, this isn't a big worry at the moment, but we all know how the Gulf of Mexico can do rapid intensification, and the model just showing that there's a possibility for rapid intensification on the 27th of this low pressure system. We just have to get closer to get more facts because it's not trendy. Now, if you look at all the perturbed members to see what could be possible, you do see, according to the Euro, that by the 23rd, that something could spark up in the Gulf. It could become a surface low pressure, upper level low, but so far it's moving to the west towards Mexico, and it's not going to be an issue for the United States yet. But we also see that possibility by the second and third of next month that there's another chance for upper level low to reach into the Gulf. And when you look at all the ensembles to see what the potential is, does any of it even read anything happening soon? It does show that by the 29th of May, that a, the upper level low and a surface low pressure could form up along the Yucatan Peninsula, and it could grow to something that could get into the Gulf that we might have to watch out for. This is going all the way until the 1st of June. And if we look to see what the chances are of this becoming a tropical storm, our first name one on the Atlantic Basin, Within 72 hours, it does have a 55 to 60% chance of becoming a tropical storm of 34 knots, 96 hours, but in five days, that chance is diminished as it dies off and leaves. So it's not going to be any worries, but as far as it becoming a tropical storm, it does have a 60% chance of becoming a name system. And if you take a look just to see where a tropical depression could form, which is 20 knots, just like the storm you see right here in Texas, it's a good... Uh, upper level low that's that's been forming around y'all for a few days now it is bouncing around it is a chance for that strength here that's where those storms are bursting at now and you see the system that's in the off the coast of atlantic matter of fact it has an 80 percent chance of becoming a tropical depression which we all know you can see the pattern where the, all this energy is a more southern pattern right now the mdr is not going straight across it's still too cool it is going more southern across nicaragua towards Guatemala, towards the Costa Rica, and these, these regions have a better chance of seeing tropical development within the next couple of weeks until this starts raising up a little better and this starts to going towards the Gulf for next month. But as you go through, you'll see within the next five days that these storms do shift over. The energy does shift towards Guatemala and towards Mexico, and there is some formation that could happen in the Pacific, which I, I will show you as well. But as you go through, you'll see the energy keep busting up from the MDR is more of a southern push over towards New Mexico and it starts doing a Pacific thing for a while. Now once you get into about eight days out, then you can start seeing that all these possibilities for tropical depressions will start to shift more northward as the rest of the month goes by. Everything starts raising up a little bit, just a little bit. And you can see this shot here. All the 80s is in this dark orange right here where it needs to thrive in for the temperatures and right where it normally comes off is still in the 70s or colder so this mdr region is still a little bit too cool all the warm is going straight across colombia brazil venezuela going towards panama nicaragua honduras all this is way warm for some growing of some tropical cyclones it's even up to 85 even the caribbean is warm it's up to 84 so it's very warm in this region for development but you can see how the sea shelf is just way too cool, especially along the Atlantic side. It's 70 degrees. As you get close towards the Gulf, you can see this is still 70 degrees as well. Some high 70s, some low 70s. It all depends where it's at. It's more higher towards Louisiana. But right in the center of the Gulf, it's 82. So anything that makes it in doesn't have a chance to develop. However, it will start weakening as it gets closer to the states. And that's what's happening to our Gulf energy that we have now that could have been a Gulf storm. I got this on 850 millibar velocity potential, so you can see the velocity of this storm form up. You see it does get together. It does become a good storm, nice and strong, especially right there. That's for the 20th around 3 p.m. That seems to be around its strongest. 
You see, as it swirls around, it goes south and west, and then it goes north and east. And it looks like it stays pretty weak at that point. As it finally leaves on the 24th, weak vorticity out into the Atlantic. Now, the Gulf system, let me update you on that. And as you can see, the very high vorticity that's happening with the storms in Texas. But even NOAA did a rally check to see the winds on this thing. Even though I don't have a center of location, the, the eye won't form long enough and good enough to become uh, something to worry about. It still has the winds with it as it's getting torn apart, but it is going to pretty much stay over water, so that's a good thing. Now, they've been checking the rallies on this, and the wind's been dying down. 25 miles per hour winds has a chance for 20, and then it goes down to 17 and 14 miles per hour winds. So this will fuse down and die down and just spin and die, mostly because this high pressure is getting stronger and stronger as it moves in. So here we are this morning as we get a good look at this system. You can see it does get a good vorticity going with it. Then, it's, then it weakens back down as it moves on shore and dies out. So I really don't have a chance to become anything. That's why there's no alert or anything about it. It is going to get torn apart. But it's not getting a center of location. So it, without a center of location, it can't be anything to worry about. It can't even be re recognized as a cyclone without a center of the storm. But by 11 o'clock, will be the strongest. It will bring some winds. It will bring tropical storm strength at the 10 meter levels. However, like I said, without a center of location, like a center of an eye, so to speak, there's no formation. Now, when we look at the 10 meter winds to see exactly what the wind rally could be as far as the strength on this, you can see it tries to form up. It gets a lot of winds around it, and it does strengthen up to a good bit. But then it moves on shore, it gets tore up pretty good. Now I am showing that it did get 35 miles per hour, 10 meter winds. However, it's not sustained winds and it didn't last very long. And as you go through time, you'll see that it does strengthen it. It does try to get a center of location to the storm. It just can't quite make it. It has some strong bands going around, some good winds. It just can't hold on to the power and the strength with the winds getting tore up at the low level winds from the high pressure moving in. But it does have a chance for some 10 meter winds getting up to 33 miles per hour. So it does have tropical depression strength. It is just shy of tropical storm strength. While it does have a moment of a center of location, but it don't hold it long enough to become anything. It dissipates very quickly and gets tore up. Plus the storm off the east coast in Atlantic, you can see that the wind rally does get really good and really strong around it. Matter of fact, it strengthens up to a very strong tropical storm, it looks like, up to 54, 55 miles per hour. So that thing will get some good strength at 10 meter levels. I think it will become a tropical storm strength. Nothing to worry about, but it will strengthen. It will rally up. You can see a good formation with it. Uh, it just will weaken just as quick and get pulled away. See, it goes right away and weakens down. But it does have a good strong moment for a second. You can see everything twirling around. You can see the winds around it. It still stays a tropical storm by the 22nd. So it does have some good strength with it. But as far as what it's going to do, it's going to weaken and go to the northeast. And the update is out on the one in the Pacific as well. Uh, for a while there, it did show two possible uh, cyclones that could form. However, I'm not showing a whole bunch of strength to it. It's in the 30s, so it could be a tropical depression, be on the very edge of a tropical storm. But it's not showing a lot of strength, and it does diminish pre pretty quickly as well. So as far as this thing holding together, it don't look very promising. So when you look at total precipitation, you can get a good, you can get a good eyes view of pretty much what's going to happen. And as you can see, the system in the Gulf, it does spin around and it puts heavy precipitation just over the Gulf of Mexico. It weakens down considerably as it goes on land later. It's not going to be anything but some wind and some heavy rain. But it does just sit there and drop all the rainfall in the Gulf of Mexico, so it never makes it on shore. As well as the one that's off in the Pacific. You can see that with the rain and the total precipitation that it kind of sits there and builds up real strong, but then it weakens as time goes down and it don't have a long track of rainfall. So it gets real strong for a while, but it weakens greatly. And we have something brewing a little further in the Pacific. It's getting close towards Honolulu and Hawaii. However, I'm showing there's nothing to worry about. Uh, it is actually called 82C. There's no name to it. It has maximum winds of 40 miles per hour. It's only at 1,007 millibars. So it's moving west at 13 miles per hour. That's about it. It did show up. It does have a good try right here. 
And then when you see it a little bit further, you can see it does try to get all the way around. It don't quite make it. It's just getting shredded by low-level winds. And that is your tropical update, guys. So God bless all of you. I hope it informed you a little bit of what's to come and what can expect of what we have now. Please share this on social media. Alert others to what is going on with these. That way, mainly, there's no fear-mongering going on. And people do know what to expect. On the second hand, we do have the storms in the south. They will come up and be some storms in the Midwest. And we have a storm in the Northwest that will drop a lot of snow for Montana, Idaho. I'm going to play this for you. This NAM 3K. It shows the next 60 hours, of course, while we praise God. So good afternoon, good morning to you. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Corinthians 13. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of, of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in a part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man... I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Amen. God bless you all. Hope you have a very great day today. God bless all of you in Texas for what y'all dealing with. I know it's really sucking. I hope the best for all y'all. Hope the best outcome for today. All glory does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a very blessed day.